Brian, that's not for your face. <laughs> I like some of this. <laughs> <laughs> So season one we discovered like it's not the smartest thing to get guys started on a road trip without eating fresh so we're changing a few things up this season yo because we're nice people funny story my brother uh when we were in college he drank so much of beetroot juice and like his pee became red like it was really weird i like i'm that's not a lie but that's a true story and he can confirm that she asked me if I'm an actor and I told her that my mother-in-law she didn't believe me. <laughs> do, you, do you believe me? <laughs> you don't believe me still? <laughs> Mr. Mongo! Oh, no, when was the last time you watched Mother-in-law? Thank you so much for the... It looks delicious. But I am. I am. Watch this Sunday, I'll be there. I will. I am... My character is Dave. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Here's your omelette. Oh, thank you. So cute. Thank you. This is the Element Aita team. What's up, Zina? How you doing, Maureen? Oh, is she not on the phone? Are you texting Maureen? Say hi. La baby. Mr. Beard. <laughs> we, we we don't know what that is. We might edit. We might edit that out. <laughs> and the sisters, I, Hi. don't be shy. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Are you ready for the weekend? Yes. Awesome. Re define ready. Oh, like Julie, ready. my lover. You know, you know. Okay, body ready. It's <laughs> almost time to go. Uh, it's 8 15, so we should be there in three hours. Let's get started. The driver's gonna be mad at me. Lake Element Title Lodge has a pretty vibrant history. It was built by Lord Galbraith Cole in 1916, and he lived there with his wife, Lady Eleanor. Lord Cole was Lord Delamere's brother-in-law. As far as characters go, Lord Cole was, you'd say, a pretty interesting person. He then shot a local in 1911 for stealing one of his sheep. After a trial, he was deported but later returned, dressed as a Somali, before fleeing to Zanzibar. His mother pleaded his case with the British government and he was allowed back much later. So I decided to take a small stroll to um, the edge of the lake. And it's funny because uh, when I told the manager I was gonna do that, uh, he was like, oh, yeah, take care, there's gonna be some buffaloes there. So I'm not sure if he was scaring me or he's telling the truth, but we're gonna find out uh, so far. <laughs> Uh, there's some zebras here crossing and uh, there they are What I thought was gonna be a direct walk to the lake didn't really turn out to be like that There's actually a huge drop here. Check this out. Look at that But that's something about the buffaloes, right? Wow, it's about uh, 6 30 right now, and it's looking beautiful. This is called the obelisk And uh, it was built in memory of a very interesting guy and this interesting guy actually turned out to be the guy who built Lake Element Title Lodge. And that's where we're staying for this weekend. Uh, he built this in 1916 and uh, he settled here in Kikopei. By the way, Kikopei is a Maasai word which means that which is green that turns white. So that's in reference to the soda and the datumite that you can find around the lake. Lord Gabriel Cole, that was his name, he uh, turned out to be an interesting guy at best, an eccentric guy at worst. And uh, among the stories I read about him was uh, he used to shoot a lot of zebras. But unfortunately, he 
uh, his health deteriorated. Dete I can never get that word right. Deteriorated, right? Uh, he got diagnosed with uh, rheumatoid arthritis around 1918, and then it got worse. And then he was confined to a wheelchair a couple of years later. And in 1929, he just—I think—he just got fed up with life, and uh, he shot himself with a revolver in 1929. And his widow, Lady Eleanor, she built this in memory of him. And uh, as you expect with most pillars, you'd find like inscriptions of of who it's erected for and all that stuff. But there's actually no writings here. You may be forgiven to think to, that someone just got like really drunk and just put some stones together, but <laughs> it's not. And uh, yeah, she didn't actually want an inscription on the memorial memorial pillar here, which is called the obelisk. Fancy name for it. Hey, what's up? It's day two, and uh, we're just uh, taking a casual stroll on the lake. And uh, there's a lot of flamingos over here. So they apparently come when the water like level is not very high. So when the rains are not doing very well. So that's when the flamingos now come to the lake. That big guy, that big, sexy, beautiful mountain over there. That's what we're climbing in a few hours. So we're just kind of like pre-gaming for that. So guys are definitely gonna get tired. They have no idea what's coming. <laughs> See that pink stretch? I'm not sure if you can see that. Flamingos everywhere. Every time we approach them, they keep just escaping. So we're gonna try to get as close as we can. It turns out that the dry season is a great time to view flamingos because that's when they flock to Lake Elementaita to feed and breed. Flamingos are probably the best example of you are what you eat. They get their pink color from the beta carotene from the crustaceans and plankton that they eat. Good thing humans are not what they eat. I don't think that would be a good side. So we're here on the edge of the lake. We've been taking a stroll in the hot sun of Elementaita. And uh, we were doing our best to approach these uh, flamingos, but not everybody kind of knows how to approach them. You gotta be really, 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 really slow. If not, they're gonna go to that side of the lake like you've just done now. So we're gonna head back to the hotel and prep for Sleeping Warrior. Again, I say, these guys have no idea what's coming. Sleeping Warrior is named so because it resembles a Moran Warrior in a sleeping position. Hey. Hey. Yo, we're up on the sides of one of the cliffs of the Sleeping Warrior and uh, we see a storm coming, so we better get done. I think it looks like it's gonna rain a little bit. But yeah, this place is gorgeous, man. If you haven't been here, I really, really encourage you guys to come here. Let's keep going together. We're going to the top. Here, right? Yeah, we go. Uh, did you leave the way, bro? I can't. We should go right to you. All right, we can come pivot. All right, let her upper. Wanna upper? Upper. Kwa njema kona yuko. Here, right. The left, sorry. All right, let her lead you. All right. All right, let her upper you. All right. Eh? Ita tele zaki dogo ba kini sawa. Lafu kama iwi sasa. Tenda straight kidogo kidogo tu kwanza ni lose so kuwa careful Now I sadly didn't manage to capture Mike falling but I can confirm that he actually did <laughs> He fell down so beautifully <laughs> <laughs> I like how when you fell, <laughs> I just, you know what I saw first? I saw, I saw the bottle flying first. <laughs> Mike has, Mike has fallen twice. <laughs> so far. Before heading back to Nairobi, we passed by the prehistoric site at Karyandusi dating back to one million years ago. The main attraction here is a sheer amount of hand axes, which also points to the evolution of tools used by humans. The Homo erectus species of humans made these hand axes mostly from obsidian rock. A trip to Lake Elementaita is a fun quick adventure where you'll be constantly fascinated by the history nuggets that swirl around you. 
When they did more investigation, they came to realize that uh, most of the stone tools had a dome-like shape or flattish in nature, which means that they had they, we had an advancement of technology of making these stone tools. Among the lakes on the floor of the Great Rift Valley, I have to say that this is one of the more fascinating ones. I really can't wait to go back to uncover more.